How's it going there, everyone? It's Mr. Zan over here bringing you guys a brand new segment for today. And for today's segment, guys, we are going to be talking about Manatsu no Taizai, Signs of a Holy War, Episode 4. The last and final installment in this special over that Nakaba has created just for us, guys. And in this special, guys, it was all about Gil Thunder and Vivian. I am not going to lie to you. It's literally the episode about these two. It's kind of funny that... I wasn't expecting it to, about, to be fully about them, since in the, in, I believe in the last episode at the end, you know how they give you little teasers at what the next episode was going to be, you would have thought it was going to be about Merlin and Gauther, but no. Gauther, of course, did have a little bit of interaction with uh, with us throughout the whole entire episode, but it's just that it wasn't enough to really say that it was all about him. It really wasn't. It was more along the line that he had a, a side quest that he was doing, but yes, Throughout the whole entire episode, it was about Merlin, but it's just that, like I said, it just wasn't enough to say that it really was about Merlin. In my honest opinion, it, I feel like it was literally the whole entire episode was about Gale Thunder and Vivian. That's what it literally was. Because remember, Vivian loves Gale Thunder. She loved him since like they were so young, and Vivian, the type of woman that she was, is so jealous that she's been following Gale Thunder throughout the whole entire episode. And Merlin apparently said, you know what, Meliodas and Gauther, I need you guys to go go fetch Vivian. I'm in, I'm tired of her shenanigans, and I'm going to teach her a lesson. That, that's what basically the whole entire episode was about. And it justified it. Because, I mean, come on. These Ovas, they're not supposed to be really nothing important, you kind of say. It's more along the lines, these are just like side stories that Nakaba wants us to like look and view at the same time. And like I said, it was very, it was a very, I wouldn't say hilarious episode, as I would say with Gauther, it was, it was a little bit more emotional towards with, in terms of with what Gauther was actually doing in the entire episode itself, but, like I said, Gil Thunder, I kind of didn't understand what he was actually kind of going for in the episode itself, I mean, in my honest opinion, it kind of felt like he was pitying Vivian for what she's been doing throughout the whole entire years, because, you know, with with Gil Thunder's, I would, I would say, girlfriend or whatever she is to him. I, I'm not too sure what they are together or if they're getting married or anything. But the point is, it just, it seemed like the creators seemed like in this episode, like they're kind of wrapping things up. Like, and like I said, like, it was just basically about Gil Thunder and Vivian throughout the whole entirety of the episode. No little bit of shenanigans here and there. And by the way, at least we got a lot of fan service at the end of the episode, which involved Merlin becoming the poster girl for Meliodas' bar, which I thought was actually spot on right there. But it's so hilarious that I forgot one of the characters actually really explained that, like, there's nothing really different about Merlin herself, because apparently Merlin is always showcasing her body all the time, which I thought that was a literally, like, breaking the fourth wall kind of kind of thing going on right there. Now, I thought was something that's kind of true, you know, Merlin's always showing off her body, but and yet, <laughs> there's nothing new with this. I'm guessing it's just because I'm assuming people wanted to see her pretty and pink. But... Nonetheless, so guys, episode was pretty uh, fun entirely, but I would say it's more along the lines as to watching this episode in a one-time thing. Rewatching it wouldn't really be fun, as a, the I would say the antics of the episode would probably get tiring after maybe the first time you watch it. That's that's my honest opinion for this episode. Um, I would say the only episode that I would have thought of the Nanatsu no Taizai over series for this uh, four episode special. I would say it would probably be episode 2. Episode 2 seemed like it was a fairly hilarious and probably would be fun watching over and over again. But this one, not necessarily. Not necessarily, guys. I would say it's more like a one-time thing. But at the end of the episode, guys, we finally get back on track with what uh, I would say the whole overall story, and that is the Ten Commandments. At the end of the episode, they gave us a small glimpse of the shadows of the Ten Commandments. And which, by the way, the Ten Commandments are very, very powerful demons that the Demon King himself has selected. And I would say that it's so hilarious that they actually foreshadow, they're foreshadowing us for the, I would say, the season 2 itself. So a lot of the anime lovers and anime viewers themselves that have only been watching up to the times but haven't been reading the manga itself, I would say stay tuned for, for season 2 because they are actually, the, even what Marilyn said in the episode itself, that the Ten Commandments are something very, on a level that's like, impossible to become. And it's true, you know, like the Ten Commandments that have been shown in the manga are pretty spot on powerful. And we, at the end of the episode, we actually got to witness Escanar. Yes, we got to witness Escanar, folks, and that's what I was actually waiting for. I was wondering when they were going to show him the freaking over, and I was excited to see the act. Even if it was just like, what, five seconds, they actually showed him. I mean, come on, it's still something to look forward to. 
I mean, at least with Escanor, guys, for all those anime lovers and anime viewers, Escanor is actually the scent of pride, and he himself is going to steal the show for season two, guys. He really is, and that's what a lot of viewers are going to be waiting for. And trust me, guys, once Escanor comes into the playing field, <laughs> Meliodas becomes literally the, the second main character. I believe he won't be the primary character. I believe Escanor is the main character out of season two itself, guys. He literally would be the embodiment of season two. Trust me, folks, when I say that he is the most powerful person in the Titan series that we know so far, uh, next to Murder, of course. But out of the males, Escanar seems to be taking the cake right there. But, you know, like I said, when they showed Escanar, I'm assuming they were just showing a glimpse as to, like, they're just preluding to the fact that Season 2 is coming closer and closer and closer. So we're still wondering as to what's going to happen in Season 2. But, like I said, the OVA didn't stray too much deep into the Ten Commandments themselves. They were just literally foreshadowing the Ten Commandments. And now I'm assuming that when Season 2 comes along, they're going to start off with, uh, I believe, Meliodas and the gang actually heading towards Camelot and fighting off against. I believe it was one of these giant giant uh, demon like statues that apparently work for the Ten Commandments and the Demon King himself. And they're basically old ancient weapons that was used in the 3000 year old war back back in those when. And that's what, I'm assuming that's where they're going to start off. Because the Ten Commandments have been revived in this episode. Yes folks. They have been revived. And yes folks, you guys cannot possibly wait for season 2 to happen. Because once the Ten Commandments come in, woo, all of the, the playing fields are changing guys. It's going to be pure hype, excitement, adrenaline, emotional action that's going to be happening when Season 2 comes along, guys. And that's what I'm loving. That's what I'm going to love about. But like I said, the Ten Commandments weren't shown. They were just shown just like the shadows. Because you know, like I said, they're going to want to show them in Season 2. But like I said, we're gonna they're going to start off Season 2 heading towards Kamala. And that's where literally the Ten Commandments start off. I'm assuming they didn't go with the route with Gauther. If I remember correctly, Gauther was actually mind controlling. I forget if I remember correctly. He was mind controlling some some of the holy knights from her back in the manga. I'm assuming they're gonna skip that little scene, but it's hilarious because they need to show that scene in order to emphasize just how powerful Gauther is. Because even Gauther was fighting Di Diane, and that little scene was actually very important. Because it goes along to show that even the the sins themselves. Fear Gauther. They fear what Gauther can do and manipulate the minds of the, the strong. And that's what I'm saying. Like I'm hoping at least show that in season two. Even if they didn't show it in the over, if they show it in season two, I can't wait to show that because that's actually a very powerful scene and it actually foreshadows a lot for the series as to say what Gauther is capable of doing. But like I said, that's it for today's segment, folks. That's all I can really say about what's going on. You know, there wasn't that too much to talk about, but like I said, it's just more about the anticipation of Season 2 coming along. And like I said, guys, you guys are not are not going to be disappointed once Season 2 comes along. Not going to tie that will outbeat its first season. And trust me when I say that, love of action will be coming your way. But like I said, guys, let me know down in the comments below what you guys thought about this episode. What was your favorite scene? What do you guys anticipate for season two? Or did you guys enjoy the little glimpse of watching Escanor coming out in that little split second that he just came out? But like I said, guys, let me know what you guys thought down in the comments below. And as always, guys, if you guys enjoy my content, give a like, comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more not so Taizai anime content. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day. But this is Mr. Zen, signing out.